we're coming to a close on our Battlefield 1 storyline, it seems. There might be one more optimization guide post in the works, but for now, we've got to get back to regular component reviews. Today's topic, though, looks at memory frequency and its impact on BF1 performance, particularly frame rates. And we briefly look at capacity and utilization, but we'll primarily be focusing on speed. Before getting to that, this content is brought to you by Rosewell's Cullinan case, which is a tempered glass side panel case, also tempered glass in the front. Available for $150 on Newegg now. They occasionally do bundle it with a 650 watt PSU as well. So be sure to check the link below for more info on that. We've been through Battlefield 1 a few times now. First was the GPU benchmark, looked at the video card performance, and then after that, HBAO versus SSAO graphics settings performance in game. And then most recently, we did the CPU comparison for benchmarks in DX11, DX12. Today we're looking at RAM. Methodology remains mostly the same, but there are a couple of critical changes. We define all of it in the article link in the description below. These results are not necessarily directly comparable to the previous test because one, we're changing memory here, and that's obviously the focus of the test. We've overclocked the CPU, running a 6700K overclocked, and the game has been updated, which also had some at least marginal performance impact, uh, mostly positive. And then we're also using different video drivers. So, those things stated, this is a new test looking strictly at RAM, but if you're interested in the others, they will be linked in the description below. We're using two primary platforms for this test. The i7-6700K with an MSI M7 Z170 motherboard will be our main platform with the 6700K overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz. Memory used is 32 gigabytes of Corsair's Dominator Platinum DDR4, easily capable of speeds up to 3200 megahertz with its first XMP and we manually tune the speeds in BIOS before each of the tests, then run six to eight passes per device. DirectX 11 will be the focus for the test since we've already shown that DX12 has some optimization issues with Battlefield 1 that will sort of override any lacking memory performance. And we did do a few DX12 tests, but they're pretty brief. The GPU used was our EVGA 1080 FTW hybrid, so we don't have much in the way of bottlenecks when operating at 1080p and with ultra settings. The most likely components to choke will be the CPU and the RAM. The point here is to show scaling of memory, so keep in mind that as resolution increases, we begin to see more taxing performance from the GPU, and that is more directly related to FPS than memory at that point, so frequency becomes a bit less relevant as the resolution increases. Let's get to it. This first chart shows Battlefield 1's memory performance when running 1080p with ultra settings on the test platform, the main one. And we're seeing largely unfettered performance with the four sticks of 3200 MHz Corsair Dominator Platinum memory, pushing a 161 FPS average about 128 1% lows and 117 FPS 0.1% lows. This is followed next by the DDR4 2400 memory. So we've clocked down the Platinum Series kit to 2400 MHz. That's at 158 FPS average or about four FPS behind the 3200 MHz kit with lows at 118 and 107 FPS. A step down with 1600 MHz DDR4 memory, which basically doesn't exist and has poor access times anyway. We're at 150 FPS average, now 11 FPS slower than the 3200 MHz kit. And now, again, no one's really buying 1600 MHz memory in DDR4 kits, but it was a worthwhile test. If we create another unlikely scenario, 1333 MHz memory, that's operating at 140 FPS average. That's a full 20 FPS slower than the 3200 MHz kit. This could be compared in some ways to single channel performance. If you remember our video from ages ago, we didn't see much impact from multi-channel platforms with DDR3 in our gaming tests a couple years back, but game development has changed and so has memory. With single channel platforms, memory speeds are effectively halved from the advertised rate. So these 1333 and 1600 results give a look into single channel performance with BF1. And as a quick PSA, keep in mind that there's no such thing as quote unquote dual channel memory or single channel memory. The memory itself is not in charge of how many channels there are, it's the platform. Here's a chart showing percent scaling as offset from DDR4 2400 versus a fairly standard 2400 MHz kit of DDR4 memory. We're seeing scaling of about 2.5% gains when moving to 3200 MHz. And we're seeing losses of about 5% when stepping down to 1600 MHz and the jump from 2400 to 1333 is about 12%. Again, remember that as we begin restricting performance through other variables, like increasing the resolution, basically taxing the GPU more, or taxing the CPU more, the memory impact will become less significant. It's a small part of the performance overall, but it is actually showing a change, which is cool. It's not really that common. But when we increase resolution to something like 4K, which is maybe more appropriate for a 1080 FTW, 
these results do vary to the point that with 4K resolution, ultra settings, we're basically see seeing zero scaling with memory at 3200 megahertz versus 1866 megahertz. Not a big difference there in performance. I think we were seeing about 67 FPS average for both tests, both DX11, uh, only variable change was the memory. And that's just because the GPU is getting taxed so heavily by the rest of the stuff in the pipeline, like the increased pixel throughput, that the memory becomes less relevant. So keep that in mind, but we're still seeing some scaling, which again is a cool thing. Now, DX12 also shows almost no scaling from memory changes, even at 1080p, and that's because the game performance is too erratic already from poorly optimized DX12. So we're not seeing, well, I shouldn't say DX12 poorly optimized, it's Battlefield 1 is poorly optimized on DX12. It's all in the developer's hands for the most part. And it's just too spotty and erratic to see a meaningful gain from memory changes alone. Just for good measure and to cover another architecture, let's throw AMD's FX8370 into the mix. Here we've tested memory at 2133 MHz and 1600 MHz, all DDR3 kits. And we can see a difference of about 5.5 to 6 FPS in the average frame rate performance between the two. That's about 6% change, considering that DDR3 kits are priced pretty equally between 1600, 1866, and 2133 MHz these days, especially with manufacturers basically dropping 1600 from production entirely. It makes sense to spend the extra $1 for something that's 6% faster in this use case. And at this point, it's actually a meaningful change because we're limited down to around 90, 80 FPS anyway. It also makes sense to run two sticks for Battlefield 1 if operating on a dual channel platform especially with these lower end CPUs. As for capacity, this is harder to measure for a number of reasons. Memory isn't instantly saturated, so it's easier to test with something more heuristic. We tried playing a 64 person multiplayer match for about 40 minutes while running logging utilities to track system memory consumption and checking Resmon for commit memory versus working set of memory. Memory usage by the application goes up quickly, but the working set of active memory being used by the game, the application, never exceeded six to seven gigabytes, even when I had 32 gigabytes in the system. We played with one stick of eight gigabytes of RAM as well, just for another 64 player match. And that was done to see if any visible stutters or pop-in issues occurred. And the answer was no, not really. We just still see the pop-in issues that are normally there, but nothing exaggerated by the memory change. And it's all the same as what you'd normally see with Battlefield 1, nothing specific to memory. So the capacity seems like you'd want definitely eight gigabytes, but the only immediate gain from having a larger capacity of memory is if you want to run background applications like Chrome or something like that that eats memory for its tabs and not have to close them. So that's it for this benchmark. This one's pretty simple. Memory has a bigger impact in Battlefield 1 than we've seen with other games, and that's always a cool thing. It's something that we can use for memory benchmarking in the future, and even something we can use for SSD benchmarking, because this is one of the things I haven't talked about yet in any of these videos. SSDs in Battlefield 1 actually make a pretty noticeable difference, especially when loading multiplayer maps. The change from using one of our NVMe SSDs to using a low-end SSD alone is fairly substantial, and putting it on a hard drive would, would definitely be noticeable. But in terms of memory, we are seeing a difference. With the lower-end CPUs, it's definitely uh, probably more critical that you actually just spend the extra one or two or five dollars to get memory that jumps from 1600 to 2133 megahertz if you're running DDR3, because that price is not bad, a couple bucks, and there's actually a meaningful change now with this particular game. Again, five to 6% between those two numbers, 1600 and 2133, so that is significant. Capacity, just recapping that quickly, it pushes the eight gigabyte barrier of the game, but it's never really, even when just testing it heuristically, playing the game properly for 40 minutes or so, we're not seeing any worse performance that's visible other than the frame rate performances I've already described for uh, the frequencies. We're not seeing any performance degradation just from the capacity change that we don't already see somewhere else like 32 gigabytes of RAM. So memory is not a huge deal in terms of capacity. You probably want a bit more if you do tend to keep a lot of applications in the background. 16 gigabytes isn't a bad idea, but it is plenty for this game if you're just playing the game and killing everything else in the background. So that's all for this time. As always, Patreon link in the post roll video. If you want to help us out directly, links in the description below for more information. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.